We're about to do a short field takeoff. The sun is setting and we out here. But how do we know if we have enough runway? Here's how to calculate that thing. Hey, let's go! As part of your pre-flight plan before every flight, you want to make sure you take the time out to calculate your takeoff distance and performance. You want to make sure that you have enough runway to execute whatever kind of takeoff you're planning on doing based on the conditions that you're in and the airport that you're in at that time. Let's get into that thing. Let's go! Boom! Hey, you never want to take your takeoff distance or performance chart for granted. You never want to consider and think to yourself, oh, I've flown out of the same airport many times on a variety of different conditions. I know I have enough runway. Always take the extra time to calculate takeoff distance and do it as part of your habits because we're all creatures of habits. So therefore, if you're in a foreign situation at a foreign airport or even at your home airport, but maybe the conditions are a little bit more extreme or different than you've been in, it's just part of your natural flight plan routine to calculate it. So you're going to calculate it and you're always going to make sure you're in a good place and you know exactly what you're working with when it comes to take off distance. The main thing and the primary thing that you want to remember here is you always want to be conservative with your estimate of terms of calculating the distance. Always take the conservative higher value. Think about calculating take off distance the same way you calculate your funds. When you start thinking about your own money, them bands, when you count them bands for the month, you want to make sure you have enough funds for the month. You always want to overestimate because you never know what can happen throughout the month. Something can happen to your car. You need to buy this. You need to buy that. This appliance break. That happens. This happens. You always want to have a little bit of extra money so you can take care of those kinds of things that life has a tendency to throw at you. So that way, if you overestimate your budget, then what happens? At the end of the month, you're still good. But if you underestimate, then you can be in over your head. The same exact rules apply when it comes to calculating take all distance. Always take the conservative higher value. If you are calculated that you needed 3,000 feet to get out and you start rolling down the runway, hey, you only needed 2,500 and you were up in the air, golf clap. Hey, congratulations and get up on out of there and you did a good job. But never, if it's the other way around, you underestimated and you really need 3,000, but you only calculated that you need 2,200 or 2,500, and you start rolling down the runway, you can start entering some serious problems. So always overestimate how much you need. Let's get into that thing right now. Let's go! Boom! So check it. You know the vibe. Let's just say we calculating a takeoff distance for a short field takeoff, and you've been given all sorts of metrics. You did your weather briefing. You know exactly what's popping off, and you've also done some other things, like you've calculated your weight and balance. If you want a review of a video of that, there's a video on this channel about how to calculate weight and balance. Let's just say you also need to calculate your pressure altitude. Again, there's a video on this channel about what pressure altitude is, why it's important and how to easily calculate it. Link to both of those videos, weight and balance and pressure altitude at the end of this video, where the links be at. Hey, one time, let's run that thing. Hey, so you've got your information. Let's just say the weight of the aircraft, we sitting at about 1670 on that weight and balance. And then we got our pressure altitude, we at a thousand. And then of course our temperature, let's just say that's 30 degrees Celsius. And then the wind, let's just say we're dealing with a headwind of about nine knot on that headwind. And we're trying to get up out of that thing on a short field takeoff. How much runway do we need is the question. To figure this out, nice and simple. Go to your POH, go to your pilot's operating handbook to the performance section. It's usually probably gonna be more like section five in your pilot's operating handbook, the performance section. Start flipping through until you get to a takeoff, short field takeoff performance chart. It's gonna look a little something like boom, this here, with all sorts of gibber and jabber and gibberish all across the top and numbers all over the place. Nice and easy, but once you have that information that you've already calculated, all you have to do is just follow the graph across to figure out what you need there. But there is a nice bonus tip that I'll give you at the end that you should factor in. It's going to help you be ultra conservative and safe. That's the most important thing, safe when calculating this. So wait for that nice tip at the end of this video. Let go. Hey, so okay, we know it's 1670, so all we're going to do, that's nice and simple. We got our weight and balance. We're gonna find the weight column on that takeoff performance chart. And hey, 1670, we're gonna go across. And then you're gonna see something that's gonna say something like your takeoff speed in knots. And it's gonna have two options. It's gonna have one option that says lift off, just regular, and then one that says at 50 feet. 
That at 50 feet is if we're trying to clear a 50 foot obstacle, which is exactly what we're gonna to try to do on this short field takeoff. Let's just say we got a nice little 50 foot obstacle at the end of the runway that we wanna get up over the top of that thing and clear that thing, A. Hey, so let's we know what speed that we're gonna need when we take it off. That's why it's important for you to follow these take all performance choice and never take anything for granted at any given time. So we got our weight. We know we're going to take off there, of course, at that 50 feet. We know what not in that rotation speed that we're going to be looking for, for that very, that good takeoff speed. We also will go across again and we're going to see another column with a bunch of numbers going down. We're looking for the one, all we concern ourselves with is what our pressure altitude is. We've already calculated pressure altitude because we follow the easy steps in the video on this channel and we know that pressure altitude is a thousand. So we're gonna follow that and we're gonna keep going across. Then you're gonna come across the temperature section. And the temperature section may be in 10 degree increments. It may start off with zero degrees Celsius, then it may give you some numbers for 10 degrees, 20 degrees, 30 degrees, so on and so forth. Our temperature is 30 degrees Celsius. So that's all we're gonna concern ourselves with is the column that says 30 degrees Celsius. Boom, we hit that thing up, 30 degrees Celsius. It's a nice hot day in that thing. And then we're gonna see two options under the 30 degrees Celsius. We're gonna see one that says ground roll and then another one that says to clear a 50 foot obstacle. We know we want to clear a 50 foot obstacle, so that's the one we're gonna choose, but what exactly is ground roll? Just for purposes of understanding exactly what that is. When you take off, if you take off on the runway, you're going down the runway and then you get into the air, that's all you have to do, and you only use a small section of the runway, that section that you use, that's considered the ground roll. But in our case, we're going to have to not only get up off the ground and get airborne, we're going to have to continue to climb and extend so we can get above that 50 foot obstacle. So in reality, instead of using this much with the ground roll, you may end up using this much runway because that extra extent is going to be you climbing, 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 trying to get up over that tree obstacle. So you're using more runway. So you can see in the ground roll section on that performance chart, the ground roll is always going to be a smaller number than to clear a 50 foot obstacle because in theory, in the execution, you need more runway to clear that 50 foot than you do just for a basic kind of ground roll kind of area. So that's what those two mean. So we're gonna roll with the clear 50 foot obstacle because that's what we're getting ready to do in that thing. So boom, we got it. And let's just say it says, okay, 1645. So we all good there. But here's one of the keys that you gotta remember. And on this same performance chart inside of your POH, you're gonna have a bunch of notes at the top you wanna make sure you read those notes because you're not just done just because you've gotten to 1645. You read those notes and those notes will tell you various kinds of things. It may tell you something along the lines of if this was a grass runway, you wanna increase that 1645 by 10% or some random number that is given to you in your PCH. It may also tell you something like if there's a headwind for every nine degrees of headwind, you want to decrease the number by 10%. So make sure you're reading that note, those notes section that's located on the same exact page in the chart inside of your POH. And you follow that based on the conditions you have. We have a nine knot headwind. So based on that, and based on the information inside of our POH, we're gonna decrease this number by uh, 10% because we have a nine knot headwind. So when we do that calculation, boom, we get something like 1480. So 1480, okay, that's not a lot of runway, but we doing a short field takeoff. We don't really need a lot of runway, but here's the bonus tip. Let go! Hey, the bonus tip is you wanna add 50% to that final number that you got. After you've calculated all the conditions, after you've done everything that you needed to do and you've read the chart and you've applied all the notes and you're gonna fully execute and everything, you wanna add 50% to whatever number you get. And here's the why of why you wanna add 50%. When you add 50% to that 1480, you're gonna get a number more like 2220, okay? And then you can round that up and say 2,500 feet. That's how much runway you're gonna to need to execute. The reason why you're being conservative here and you're added, taking the higher value and you're adding that 50%, because think about your aircraft and when these performance charts were actually written out. Many of us, of course, fly in older kind of aircrafts. And when you're flying in an older aircraft, particularly an aircraft that you may be training in, that aircraft can be decades old. So this performance chart was written and calculated based on perfect conditions of the perfect airplane when it came right when it came off the assembly line. Well, obviously, that was many decades ago, and that's not today. 
So there can be some performance lag. There can be some performance like not as high as it was when it came off the assembly line back in 1970 something or 60 something or whatever kind of aircraft that you may be flying. So you always want to factor that in. Think about it from this perspective. If you had a classic sports car, like a Ferrari, but it was a 1976 or some type of Ferrari or high-end sports car, it may still be able to perform very high. Hey, it's a Ferrari. It can go from zero to 60 and whatever, but I bet you it doesn't perform as well as it did on the first day it came off the assembly line in 1976. See the difference? The same with your plane. This POH was written perfect conditions for the perfect aircraft many decades ago. You need to factor in a little buffer to give yourself some idea of, okay, what if it doesn't perform exactly like it's supposed to do and everything is executed the same because nothing is always perfect when you're flying. A, that's why you add the 50% and that gives you a more conservative high value. Again, back to the original statement, always overestimate when it comes to calculating your takeoff distance and performance. Let go! So if you had 3,500 feet of runway, and you calculated a conservative high value that all you need is 2500 to execute that short field takeoff, you in a beautiful place, baby. Let's do that thing. Let it do what it do, baby. Hey, don't forget to like this video, comment on this video, share this video, and subscribe to this channel. I am Donovan Batiste, and this is Leadership Mindset, a place where you can come for free and fun videos about everything that you need to know for you to become a pilot. Because I want you to feel what pilots all over the world feel when we swing it and bang it. That thing. Hey, subscribe to this channel. Love you one time.